know, and I definitely agree with you on the, that has been the general consensus, leisure first, then business. And we'll talk about business in here in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, interestingly to what you said, you know, we are seeing occupancy increases across the states. Now, are we back to where we were, uh, you know, in October, November last year? Probably not. And I keep thinking about sitting at uh, the marketing strategy conference in January and there was a lot of talk about, yeah, we might be headed towards that, you know, that little R word of recession, but I don't think anyone could have foreseen just how quickly we'd spike and or you know down. Um, the good news is a lot of the studies I'm seeing have kind of said the same thing. It's it's going to be a very quick be sh- uh, sharp upturn, and while we won't be back to where we were in August, uh, you know that we are going to recover quickly. It's this is not going to be a you know five ten years before we're back to where we were. Uh, are you hearing the same thing, or what are you? Well, hearing? Y- 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 yes and no. I think for the leisure, a lot of that could could happen. I think for the corporate travel and meetings and conventions travel, the v- the variables are very different. Uh, there was a CRB study out last week that projected the number of quarters it, w- it would take and the outlook for the economy, for the hotel industry to get back to where it was in pre-COVID, and, and they're predicting anywhere from 14 to 24 quarters. So, uh, so I mean, uh, I'm sorry, 14 to eight, 18 quarters. So, so we're talking, you know, could be two to three years. Uh, they're saying within the 12 months, we could be back up to 70% of the indexes where we were pre-COVID. Uh, but again, there's just so many variables. It's why I would advise everybody to monitor all the sentiment indexes that are coming out because we're dealing with a, a, a landscape globally that the hotel industry has never dealt with before. Um, you know, airlines are still review, you know, reserving the lights, rights to totally change their schedules, you know, you know, 14 to 21 days prior to departure. Right now you can buy a trip to go anywhere and the schedules in September may look really robust, but when it comes 14 days prior to your trip, the airlines are only going to fly the routes they know they need to fly. So there's all sorts of implications that travelers maybe can't control. So there's a lot of variables out there that I think um, it's not optimistic. It's not pessimistic. Pessimistic. It's, just, it's going to continue to be a volatile situation on a week to week basis until uh, ultimately until there's a vaccine, I think, discovered. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's interesting. We've been talking about leisure. Uh, Let's talk about business for a minute, because you're right. Every study, every person I've talked to, both on the you know partner side or the hospitality side, have, have pretty much unanimously said leisure first. And we definitely think leisure is going to come back quicker, faster, stronger, you know, better. On the business traveler side, what we're seeing, you know, is it's kind of to your point that health and safety, right? Upgraded cleaning standards. They want to, they want to know that they're going to be safe. They're clean. They want to see that, uh, you know, in a lot of cases that the employees are wearing masks, that they've been trained on how to properly clean on how to, how to properly prevent anything from happening and then continue to communicate. GBTA just released that study that showed that about 41% of those corporate travel managers that were surveyed thought that, business travel would actually resume in the near future. 